And, uh, and if you could just say your name uh, and ask a question, that'd be cool. And who you're asking the question to, or if you don't know, then I'll, I'll share the questions between us. So uh, let's crack on then, first hand. Oh, that's you. Okay. <laughs> Uh, Tom OTC, okay, thank you, and uh, Henry, I think it's the first time you've been officially in front of us, so welcome, oh. and uh, my question is, uh, start night, a nice and easy one to Mark, Mark, <laughs> you've been managing for 20 odd years, and you've had a lot of success, including getting us to where we are, one promotion, into the playoffs, you did something similar at uh, Swindon a few years ago. You got them into the playoffs. Compare and contrast the two teams, and if they played at their prime to our team, what would be the result? I think it's a, it's a, yeah, it's, it's a little bit of um, a mismatch without being sarcastic or whatever, like that team at Swindon was in League One, trying to compete to get in the championship. So it was a division above. We were in League Two. We had we had four or five players from Tottenham that nearly all played international football. So it's difficult to compare that team to this one. Um, both young teams, both made lots of mistakes, both played a lot of attractive football. Um, I think this one eventually could be as good, but if you had to push me on it, that team, if they played each other now, would would be the favourite to win the Swindon team because um, they were competing to get the championship. Is that right? Anybody else? Yo. Ian. Yeah, it's it's been a long, difficult season, as it always is. Um, it's coming good. It's looking really great. Um, and, uh, uh, well, I'm certainly optimistic about the future with the team. Um, you seem to have got a, a system since Morecambe, a consistent group of players, um, and uh, a good confidence through the players. Um, I mean, is it, have you done something different, or do you feel you'd, it's just come together? We've not done anything different, really. Um, I, I don't feel we've played particularly well since uh, Colchester was a standout performance. That was probably the best performance of the season, um, which was after Morgan. Uh, since then, we've we've managed to be effective rather than exciting, and we've. We've managed to get some results, although we lost to MK Dons. But at some point, we have to start playing well if we are going to get through the playoffs. It's, you know, I don't think you can keep just grinding results out. I, th I don't think with the players that we've got, we would win the playoffs doing that if we were to get in them. I think we need to hit some form. Um, we need a bit more consistency individually, which then leads to collectively. To, to carry us and, and make sure we, we finish the season off right and if we do get in the playoffs then we can finish it off so no nothing's different really we've we're trying to stick to a settled team um Morecambe we gave Reese Brown a rest which was much needed he's come and he's come back flying apart from Saturday um so yeah I think it's just we're relying on the players to, to play well individually and, and collectively. Next question, please. Yeah, go ahead. Hello, I'm Andrew Budd. I've been living in Nailsworth three years and I started supporting the local team, so I'm probably called a plastic. But anyway, um, my question is... Um, about the south stand, I stand in the south stand. I'm on the kind of the old farts corner over by the changing room. Oh, it's, oh, it's, well, hey, it's, I've been cut out for swearing. 
Is this all working? Yep, good. Um, yeah, I'm over that side, and um, obviously I'm very, very well aware about the different levels of support from the younger supporters behind the goal. I thought it was really good against Macclesfield, and um, I know there's all kinds of problems with people having the wrong tickets and this kind of thing, but is there, do you think there's anything more the club could do uh, to try and build some bridges with some of the people there that seem to be, well, basically unhappy about everything, even though I personally am overjoyed to be watching the club. There we are, that's the question. Possibly on behalf of some people who haven't come here because they, I don't know, maybe they're shy or something. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, they're not shy on social media, are they? <laughs> yeah. I, I think there's like a very small number of people that, um, that just like for there to be um, problems, that, and they create problems where they don't exist. Um, they create this false narrative, actually, of South Stand versus the rest of the club. Uh, I don't think that's right. It is just a small group of people. The ticket issue has pretty much gone away now. The first time we checked all tickets, um, you know, we, we found 50 cases of, of people using under 11 tickets, adults using under 11 tickets, which is just wrong. Uh, second time we checked was last Saturday, and we had no cases of it, so the message is through. We'll change the turnstiles next year so that they sort that out for us automatically and we won't need to be checking tickets. So it's just a, just a blip in our season, really. Um, but I just think that uh, there are a few people that like to cause trouble. Um, they don't come to these events. They don't even come to all of our games. And it's just the nature of the beast, I think. Uh, it's probably like that at every football club. So, uh, But we do what we can. And uh, Henry is uh, launching a new initiative, uh, which I think he put up on the forum uh, today. Um, and we're going to ask for fan representatives from each of the four stands to meet every month and just talk through the fan experience on a match day with us uh, so that we can see what we can improve. We can get feedback from our fans and, and actually give feedback as well. So I think that will help. Yeah, could I, uh, Sandy Jack, could I, could I just suggest, Bill, that when uh, he does that, he actually takes a view from those of us who go away and how the crowd behaves when we're away. Yeah, sure. Sounds sounds fine. Do you mean how you guys behave when you go away? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> Is that good, good behaviour? I mean, some of the language in that that's used to young players behind us, especially we notice it away games because we're not in where they normally stand, and therefore, you know, I don't think it's fair on some of the younger players. And I think th that view should be taken into account as well as home games. And is that language from our fans? Is that what you're Yes. Okay. Yeah. 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 Add that as for the four stands to an away. Yeah, we'll make it five stands then. The fifth will be the away stand. Yeah, I like that. Uh, another question? Hello, Paul Pettifer. Um, just on the, the away thing. The, the language that is used uh, is unfortunately rather naughty, but I blame the stewarding, the same as all clubs we've gone to this season. The language gets ridiculous. The word C is used quite often, but nothing is ever done about it. The stewards just, just stand back and do absolutely nothing. I blame the stewarding as much as the people who are doing it. Um, I think all round stewarding should be better. Stewarding is an issue that we're going to look at here to make sure that we're getting it right. And it's one of the things that we hope, we're, we're pretty sure, we'll get feedback on from, from some fans uh, you know, in the process of doing this. Uh, do you think that um, you know, those of our fans that object to our stewarding object to it because they can't get away here with what they get with away with at the away club? Do you think that's part of the problem? I think that's part of it, yeah. yeah I think they, they get away with a lot of away games, mm. where here we tend to be a little bit stronger, mm. um, and where they respect the club, I, I can't answer that one, but mm. I know the people that get involved on the, on the forum, 